So once again, welcome back. Today we are going to discuss about the leprosy, also known as Hansen's disease. And it is a chronic granulomatous disease caused by Mycobacterium leprae that affects the nerves and the skin. And the bacteria, it is a gram-positive intracellular bacteria with an incubation period of 2 to 40 years with an average of 5 to 7 years. The common source of infection is a man itself, from man itself, spread via droplet, and the target is or are the nerves, more specifically the Schwann cells of the nerves. Coming to the diagnosis, the diagnostic criteria, three points we have to remember, the skin, nerve and bacteria. And if any one is positive, we can diagnose, we can confirm the diagnosis as leprosy. First of all, the skin, the lesions, it is uh, there should be hypopigmented erythematous lesions with a definite sensory deficit. That is the hypoesthetic lesion. Secondly, the nerve. There, is, there should be an enlarged, thickened peripheral nerve with or without motor sensory deficit. Thirdly, the bacteria. Bacteria is, the, we have to demonstrate the mycobacterium leprae in the lesion. That is the slit skin smear. The three sites we prefer, the eyebrows, the eye ear lobules, or the peripheral skin lesions. From these sites, we can take the slit skin smear. And when we say it is positive, when there is more than 10 raised to 4 bacteria per gram tissue. And an ideal sample is a skin with a part of the cutaneous nerve. And the WHO classifies the leprosy into posibacillary and multibacillary. So posibacillary we say when the lesions are 5 or less and there is no nerve involvement or at least or one nerve involvement. There should not be more than one nerve, nerve involvement. And there is no AFP smear positive. Acid fast bacilli smear positive is not there. So if the patient is having six or more lesions, then we can say it is multibacillary or if two or more nerve involvement is present or if there is any skin smear positive for AFP, then it is multibacillary. Okay, so if one nerve is involved, it is okay, it is posibacillary. Then regarding the disease manifestation, it varies depending on the patient's immunity. Mostly there won't be any disease, okay? And uh, many case, some cases there is determinant leprosy where the leprosy disease becomes evident and it manifests. So it is classified by ridley Joplin into TT, BT, BB, BL, LL. That is tuberculoid, tuberculoid leprosy, borderline tuberculoid, borderline, borderline, borderline lepromatous and lepromatous leprosy where the good prognosis is for the TT whereas towards this end that's lepromatous leprosy it is poor prognosis so the prognosis is in this direction the ridley joplin uh, classification is based on clinical bacteriological immunological and histopathological features so, going into the details, the tuberculoid leprosy, that is tuberculoid tuberculoid TT, it is one of the most common form which is seen in India. There is one or few hypopigmented macules or plaques, see, which is sharply demarcated and hypoesthetic. Often, it can be erythematous or with raised borders. There is devoid of any sweat gland or hair follicles also. And there is asymmetrical enlargement of one or few peripheral nerves. Okay. See, this is also an, another diagram, another picture of tuberculoid leprosy. Next is borderline tuberculoid, that is BT. It is the most common type where the hypopigmented erythematous hypoesthetic lesions are seen 
with satellite lesions and pseudopodia like margins are also seen so what are satellite lesions they are small periphery lesions see these are satellite lesions and also look at the pseudopodia like margins so these are the features of borderline tuberculoid which is the most common type next is the borderline borderline bb which is the most unstable or rarest type because usually it turns into either bt or it turns into bl that is either it worsens or it becomes better so it is the most unstable or the rarest type where the target or an annular lesions are seen just remember borderline borderline two borders are coming so it it's uh, becomes a border like lesion so it is a target or annular lesion there are another appearance so the terminology swiss cheese appearance or inverted saucer appearance next is the borderline lepromatous where there is multiple lesions on both the sides are seen see asymmetrical multiple nerves are involved with 10 to 20 percentage of loss of sensation at the skin lesions are only seen whereas in lepromatous leprosy multiple lesions on both the sides are seen and hypoesthesia is only a late sign usually the sensation is normal there only in the later stages only hypoesthesia develops there is dermal infiltration and the characteristic feature of the face is leonine facies which means resembles that of the line where there is saddle nose deformity pendulous ear lobules perforated palate and medrosis are seen see the saddle nose deformity and there is a ear lobes are pendulous here and uh, inside their palate will be perforated and there is medrosis and all the scores features resembles that of a line okay so that's a leonine facies and there is acral distal symmetrical nerve involvement and also there is a tendency for symmetrical nerve trunk enlargement also in gram positive slit skin smear the bacteria are arranged in globi like pattern that we can see here see this is the arrangement of the bacilli as well as the epithelioid cells the bacilli are seen as globe in peripheral nerves where they initially invade the schwann cells they initially becomes uh, form there occurs the form degenerative myelination see this is a form cells known as lepra cells and also axonal degeneration and later on valerian degeneration occurs in addition bacilli are plentiful in the circulating blood and also in all organs except lungs cns femoral reproductive tract and posterior chamber of the eye So these are two diagrammatic representation of the HP that is histo histology of the specimens where this is the LL that is lepromatous leprosy this is TT and this is a worse prognosis so this is a good prognosis here there is we can see a clear space between the epidermis epidermal layer and the see this collection of the form cells so that clear space is grand zone and it is seen in LL whereas there is a well defined granuloma around the nerve so this is the nerve around the nerve and this is granuloma formed with epithelioid cells and also there is epidermal layer being invaded or eroded by all these cells and there is no space in between so that is the tt and we have seen two uh, manifestations one is determinate leprosy which is the evident leprosy disease and one is the there is no disease manifestation and there is another entity with this which is known as indeterminate leprosy where the body doesn't know how to react or handle the bacteria so it is occurring in mostly in children and in endemic areas like chatisgarh bihar and it mostly occurs in the face where there is hypopigmented macule on the face mostly as a single lesion and that's why we confuse it with pityriasis alba where it occurs in the face usually but the difference 
or the differentiating features are there is no scaling in this indeterminate leprosy with normal sensation and mostly it resolves and it is a single lesion whereas the pityriasis albite is multiple lesions occurs and there can be scaling also and it also recurs and that is the differential diagnosis DD for indeterminate leprosy. So I have told you that some sites are there where the leprosy, the bacteria are not infected. Or these are the sanctuary sites where the leprosy is not affected. They are CNS, lower respiratory tract that is the lungs, posterior chamber of the eye and the female reproductive tract. So this is the table with all the information that we have told that it's in the tablet, tabulated format same thing we have discussed okay mainly discuss about the tuberculoid leprosy and both tt and bt are combined here borderline where bb and bl are combined and this is the lepromatous leprosy all the features we have seen okay and these are the images some of the figures were many parts of the body are affected various lesions we can see here the raised borders can be seen here lobules are affected See the hypopigmented lesions with this uh, pseudopodia like margin, the satellite lesions are seen. Okay, there is erythematous lesions can be seen. Okay, same thing we can see here. Coming to the treatment, multi drug therapy, the red blister pack we are using here. This is the blister pack. The drugs, which are the drugs, mainly three drugs, rifampicin, clofacimin, and dapsone. Where well, the rifampicin is the most effective out of these three. And daily we have to take some drugs and also monthly only drugs are also there. Rifampicin, 600 mg monthly is taken, is given for adults. Whereas in children, it is 450 mg is given for children. With the age group of 8 to 14 years, okay. Clofacimin, both daily as well as monthly we are giving. 300 mg monthly we are giving. 100 mg daily also giving. Whereas in children, the half of the dosage. 150 is given monthly. Whereas daily, the same 100 is being given. Dapson, 100 mg daily we are giving for adult. The half of the dose, 50 mg is giving for the children daily. The duration of the treatment for posi bacillary all the three drugs we are giving for six months, whereas for multibacillary, all the three drugs being given for 12 months, that is one year we have to give. So in this pack, we can see this is the for the day one of the month. Three doses of clofacimin, 100 mg, that is 300 mg with rifampicin 300 plus 300, that is 600 mg rifampicin with the day one dosage of DAPSO 100 mg being given. So this is for the day one and next is day two, day three, day four. Like this, we are giving, we have to take, we have asked the patient to take these medications daily so that this pack completes a one month duration of treatment. Regarding the follow up, during the treatment, initially we have to ask the patient to come within two to four weeks just to evaluate for any side effects of the medications and then every three months we have to ask the patient to come okay the routine follow-up is every three months after completion of the treatment say after six months for post or after 12 months for multibacillary annual follow-up is required in case of tuberculoid disease we have to ask the patient to come for three more years if it is a lepromatous disease for five more years we have to ask him to or ask her to come and also in case of any new lesions or any other problem develops, then please ask them to come, okay? And another problem is there can be relapse, but most relapses usually occurs around five to 10 years or even more after that, of after completion of the treatment. And the risk factors for the relapses is usually incomplete treatment or in cases of very high bacterial load. If if we are suspecting any relapse, then we have to take a biopsy that is needed, okay? 
and the treatment for the relapse is the same regimen but for example for uh, example if the patient initially had posi basilary disease and now the relapse is coming as multi basilary then we have to treat the patient with the, the multi basilary regimen okay that is a 12 months dosage for prevention of leprosy in close contacts we can give rifampicin single dose orally for more than or equal to 20 kg consider the age of the contact the exposed person if the person is more than or equal to 15 years of age rifampicin 600 mg can be given whereas 10 to 14 years of age 450 mg rifampicin if the patient of the contact is 6 to 9 years of age then half of the dose that is 300 mg single dose orally can be given if the contact is having less than 20 kg then the age should be of more than or equal to 2 years then the rifampicin 10 to 15 mg per kg single dose orally can be given for preventing alternative agents for the treatment if the patient is having resistance to the rifampicin then we can consider some other drugs so second line drugs and the, they are minocycline, clarithromycin, fluoroquinolones, which includes ofloxacin, levofloxacin, moxifloxacin. And at least two of these second line drugs with clofacimin, we have to give daily for six months, for the first six months, followed by any one of these second line drug with clofacimin has to be given for 18 months daily. That is the alternative regimen. We have to look the, into the lepros, leprosy reactions, that is the lepra reactions also. There are two reactions, type 1 as well as type 2. The type 1 is reversal reaction, type 2 is ENL, erythema nodosum leprosum. The type 1 is a delayed type, that is a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction, whereas the type 2 ENL reaction is a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction. This usually occurs, that is type 1 usually occurs in posi bacillary diseases like BTBB, whereas type 2 reaction usually occurs or seen in multibacillary diseases like BBBL, ELL. Here, occasionally only new lesions occur, whereas in ENL, from the name itself, red tender nodules occurs. The skin lesions here becomes erythematous and edematous, whereas and also neuritis occurs, and new sensory motor deficits occurs, and other organs are not affected in the type 1 reversal reactions with other some other features or complications like fever edema of the hands or face are also seen but in enl there are no other changes except for this erythema nodosum leprosum that is a red tender nodules neuritis occurs and other organs are affected here there can be uveitis, orchitis, hepatitis, and also complications like other complications of a fever, joint, that is arthralgia, can also occur. The treatment is, we should not stop this multi-drug therapy. Usually these reactions occur when we give multi-drug therapy. During the treatment stage, the treatment process, these reactions occur. And there is a high tendency to stop this medication, but we should not stop this multidrug therapy. We have to continue and we can also supplement the, them with systemic steroids, preferably prednisone 40 to 60 mg per day can be given with a maximum dose of 1 to 1 gram per kilogram per day, depending on the severity of the symptoms. And in both the cases, the same prednisone can be given. Whereas in ENL, if still it is relapsing or if it's persist or it is resistant to the uh, prednisone the steroids thalidomide cyclosporine pendoxifilin methotrexate and high doses of clofacimin also can be given for enl also these are the images of the lepra reactions this is lepra 1 reaction and here this is lepra 2 reaction where there is red tender nodules can be seen Another entity we have to know that is a Lucio phenomenon known as the erythema necroticans. Necroticans means necrosis, something related to necrosis, okay? It's a rare presentation of, it's a type 2 reaction where it is a diffuse form of a leprosy reaction where there is diffuse, where is a 
necrosis of the tissue all this peripheral lesions they becomes ulcers and there is a degradation and death of the tissue known as necrosis and it is an aggressive and most fatal complication of the leprosy known as the lucia phenomenon and we have to see the national leprosy eradication program to eradicate the leprosy as well as to reduce the stigma of the disease and also to prevent the complications the deformities also and rehabilitation is also one of the pillar of this nlp and our target is 1 per 10000 population and it was it is said that we achieved that in 2005 but still the leprosy cases continue around 675 new leprosy cases were reported in 2019 to 20 so that's the situation here and uh, the aim of the program is early detection then treatment with multi drug therapy disability prevention and medical rehabilitation intensified health education and public awareness campaign to reduce the social stigma attached to the disease so what are the major activities the same early detection and treatment of the leprosy that's a major step to prevent the transmission of the disease and also to prevent the deformities also next is a disability prevention and medical rehabilitation we can provide reconstructive surgery for the deformities of the face as well as the limbs provision of the microcellular rubber chapel mcr chapels aids and appliances like wheelchairs crutches goggles are also has to be given or are given free of cost and we are providing trainings to the medical officers health workers paramedical workers asha workers for the same and also sensitization programs for paramedical workers anganwadi workers tribal promoters and educated youngsters of high risk communities like tribal population okay the objectives of the iec information education communication initiatives are to create the general awareness about the leprosy that is we have to give information and educate them regarding the signs symptoms cause as well as the deformities and also regarding the free treatment which are available which we are providing in health institutions then only the patients are motivated to come for the treatment only and also encourage the voluntary reporting to the health centers for diagnosis and treatment there is a patient themselves has to identify their deformities and regarding the signs and symptoms and then come voluntarily come for the treatment then also a reduction in the stigma and special focus on targets groups like slums coastal regions and tribal populations and uh, the sustainable development goals it say that by 2020 we have to end the epidemics of aids tuberculosis malaria and neglected tropical diseases and in the among the neglected tropical diseases among the 18 neglected tropical disease leprosy is one among them another program more active in the state of kerala is ashamedam now the version is 5.0 that program is to decrease the prevalence rate less than 0.1 out of 10000 and it is manifested or implemented at different levels of districts block and panchayat the target is to reduce the child cases to reduce the rate of child case with disability and also to reduce the grade to deformity and the target populations are school children of 3 to 17 years of age and also those residing in hostels tribal population coastal and urban slums migrant laborers and the contacts of the leprosy that is the contact of less than 2 years for posi bacillary or less than 5 years of contact in multi bacillary these are the target population of the ashamedam the strategies are the same central government had developed another fiction character known as called as sapna for the promotion of uh, the prasi campaign she is a fiction char- character of 12 year old girl she had leprosy and by correct proper treatment of with the multi drug therapy her leprosy had been cured and now she is on 
to help the people clear off the stigma and help the leprosy positive cases regarding their treatment and promotion of this health awareness and the prevention also and lot of posters have been made with sapna as the character okay let us make india leprosy free